my opinion is the Kim Potter trial will have more of an impact on law enforcement behavior than even the Chauvin trial. And, and, mm. and let me know if you would disagree with that statement, that it may in, impact their day-to-day -day behaviors, uh, policies, may have a, a broader impact than the Chauvin trial. I'm not sure, though. Um, I'm not sure. Um, for two reasons. Well, I, I think Chauvin... I think Chauvin's impact is nationwide. So I, I, I just I disagree with that just that statement about the, the impact because Chauvin's impact was about how police treat people, and you can and you start seeing that even in cases here in New York where you know they they would tackle a guy and everybody's like oh it's a guy all right it's all right you know because they don't want the guy dying on them and, and yeah, that's a good point more. that's a fair point so so I think nationwide the, the and I think even worldwide the, the Floyd was a phenomenon um, because that was just excessive force the Potter case is really just one about an accident this was an accident right taser 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 was an accident and this is whether this accident because i, I don't think any everyone who have asked who watches that tape who understands what happened everyone agrees that this was an accidental difference she didn't mean to kill him right but now we're talking about is there any criminal liability for that accident now so everybody understands accidents are usually civil and we're talking about negligence right so we have negligence in spades right she's been negligent she should you know, out of the dick. But now, you, criminally, we're talking about things like culpable negligence or recklessness. And, and the difference is, is that for culpable negligence or recklessness, you have, there's a risk and you disregard that risk and that causes someone's death. So in this case, um, in using this case as an example, the Potter case, um, the regulations say that you're supposed to carry your taser on your weak hand and your firearm on your strong hand side. And the reason why is because if, if shit hits the fan, you want to be able to grab your gun quickly and you don't want to get them confused. So you don't want to have them both on the same side. So, for instance, in this particular case, if Kim Potter, if she had them both, her taser and her gun on the same side and this happened, then you have culpable negligence or even recklessness. Right. It was reckless to do that because you could pull the wrong one and kill someone. But in this case, since she had them both on opposite sides and pulled the wrong one by accident. Now that kind of takes out that culpable negligence piece and gives you that pure accident. So now you kind of figure it out. Well, if she had them on the right side and she followed the procedures, but she just pulled the wrong weapon and screamed taser, taser, taser. How do you prove that culpability? So I think and, and part of it right now, I think there's a little bit of an overcharge here with this kind of, you know, intentional murder. And then you got to have this reckless murder piece of it. But it really depends now on how the jury is going to feel about whether this accident, because again, I think everybody can see it's an accident, whether this accident should be charged criminally. And I think that'll be that'll be the issue if she gets convicted. And that will be the issue on appeal. Because I still I it's just like um one of the cases here with Starbucks. I think in, in Starbucks, they, 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 somebody had a peanut allergy and the person was like, I don't give me something. And it totally had peanuts in it. And the person gave it to them by accident. And the person who went to anaphylactic shock and almost died. Right. You, that person is not going to be charged criminally for that unless you can prove that person intended to do that. You know, but if it was an accident, yes, yeah, Starbucks is going to have to pay. That person's probably going to lose their job. But it's not a criminal act. So, again, I, you know, it's, it's, it's still a lot of facts that have to come out, but I don't know where we're going to go with that. Yeah. And, and another thing that I was that I was thinking about was the. I mean, how so. Is it actually that they have a policy that the taser is always on your non-dominant hand, or is that just best practice? Because that may that may make some a little bit of a difference, I think. Or do you would you agree with that? Well, I, I would have to look at their, their. I know for for us, we had we had a, a policy of how to hold your weapons. Your weapon should be this should be here, this should be here, this should be here, this should be over here, and it was written into our SOP standard operating procedures. How you wear your weapons, how you wear your uniform, and you know, and they used to tell you. If you if something happens and you don't do it the way we told you to do it, then you're on your own. Right. And you could be held liable for not doing what we told you to do. And we've seen that in many cases. Yes. We, we saw this. And um, this is something that that was that happened in, in recently in the Chauvin case. Right. They were saying that the our policy says you're supposed to turn them over and blah, 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 blah. And they said, well, you didn't follow policy. He committed a crime because he didn't follow mm -hmm. the policy. So that's what you're looking at here. The policy. Now, again, their policy may be differently, but I would be very surprised if their standard operating procedure didn't tell you how to wear a uniform, what uniform to wear and how to have your duty belt and how to have your weapons and stuff um, on. If, it, if they didn't, then that's crazy. But I, I'm assuming they did because if, if yeah, I'm assuming they did. They, they had to. It's just like. <laughs>
It seems like that would be the policy because that's the policy, like right. you said, uh, Nate. I think I've heard of that policy in every law enforcement agency I've heard of, anywhere I've ever heard of it. I mean, it, that, you know, non dominant hand versus dominant hand, uh, that seems to be the policy. So it'd be weird if there's an abrogation there if that was diff the different policy. Um, and they're going to need to, obviously, they'll need to bring up that evidence, and that's material evidence, right? Because, yeah. you know, what the policy is, what they're trained on is very material. So that's what I'm, you know, waiting to hear in that case. Well, here's an interesting question. Does Dante Wright's resistance authorize Kim Potter to use deadly force? And if that, so, does that make a difference? That was Nick's point yesterday. Shout out to Nick. I give credit where credit's due. When I, and he made that argument that he was allowed, that she was actually justified to use a higher level of force because of what he was doing. He was fleeing the car's a deadly weapon, right? So he was authorized to, she was authorized to use that. But I think the problem is authorized or not because of the perceived negligence, right? You know, because of the perception of negligence. It's it's going to be perceived that the higher level was not warranted, even though it might have been. Because didn't she say that she didn't intend to use deadly force? Yes, and the the problem is is that uh, the officer in effectuating the arrest is essentially it's a self defense claim, right? The person is using force, and I'm trying to overcome that force to effectuate an arrest. So it's a, it's a, it's a classic self defense claim, except in law enforcement context. And so everyone understands there's no such thing as accidental self defense. Right. Self-defense is I meant to do what I've done. And I so in Cal Rena, I meant to kill these people. Right. There's, there's no accident here because I had so, a very good reason. Yeah, for Because I had a very good reason. And her defense here is I meant to tase him, but I created an accident. So if so. So let's say if even if it's right, if she was able to use deadly physical force, the fact that she's already admitted that she wasn't trying to use deadly physical force, and she wasn't kind of erases that. And, you, you know, she's not going to go and I accidentally lucked up in the self-defense. That's just not the way it goes. That, that's not a legitimate reason to to employ deadly physical force that yeah. you have to intentionally do it. And she, yeah. she admittedly intentionally didn't do it. I mean, she's admittedly said that I, I didn't do it intentionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um. I also wonder if if uh, Dante Wright's family. I, I haven't actually paid attention to whether or not they filed a civil suit against the uh, against the city for a, a wrongful death action. Because I, I would be I, curious. I would imagine they would, but I would be curious if if part of that would be a claim that they were negligent in causing his death because of because uh, didn't the taser look a lot like a like a normal gun. Yeah, I would I would yeah. expect a taser to normally look very very different, and for exactly this kind of a reason, right? But so gripping, the the, cho the choice of of tasers, I feel like I, I wonder if that would be if that would be maybe a, a some potential grounds for for liability. Yeah, a lot a lot of people don't realize tasers are deadly weapons in in I think almost every state. Tasers, and what that means, they're they're just as dangerous as guns. In Georgia, for instance, the um the Rashard Brooks case, where the guy pointed a taser at the cop and the cop shot him, and people were like, oh, you know, he pointed a taser at him. Tasers are dead are deadly weapons. And in this case, you know, I, I understand they're, they're we call them less than lethal options, but if you are a regular person, you point a taser at somebody, they're gonna charge you as if you pointed a gun at somebody. That's that's an aggravated assault. Mm. So I do understand the difference in the weapon, but and also the weapons are so similar. That's why there's a pistol grip. You know, these aren't your the the. You remember back in the day when you had the the tasers that look like remote controls, the little yeah electrical beam that you, <laughs> like yeah. those those aren't those aren't the tasers of the day. So we, we'll we'll see. I uh, it's gonna be it's a tough case. It's just they do have a different feel though, right, Nate? I mean, you know, uh, like for me, whenever I shoot, even even you know regular guns, right? I mean, you can have a different pistols that have different feels. They have different balance, right? So it's it's tough when you when you when, when you got somebody when you're struggling with somebody i i've done it before accidentally too like like say when you're struggling to try to arrest somebody mm -hmm. and you're trying and i'm trying to pull out pepper spray and i pull out an aspartame now that's now pepper spray is like level three aspartame is like almost right right below a gun right that the, 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 those are two different levels you're supposed to be on but in your heat of the moment you're grabbing something and it feels if they feel similar you pull it out you're like oh shit i pulled the wrong thing so that's why you know if, if you know both of them being pistol grip like the way they were and it's you know and it's it's just tough it's just tough don't get me wrong him, him resisting didn't help but it's 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 tough to make that argument that she that she should have known based on the way the weapons are designed it's just it's yeah. tough